Hello and welcome. We're coming to you live on DETV. My name is Quinn, and today we're joined with State Joey Pachel from the Delaware Cannabis Advocacy Network. State Auditor, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for tuning in, um, especially those of you that care about accountability and transparency. I am your independent statewide elected official, your state auditor. Many of you uh, know what we do, and surprisingly, many do not. So we are here to make sure that you get a fair deal. We wanna make sure that your tax dollars are spent the way they were intended. And we do this through various processes, including audits, which could be financial or performance audits, investigations, examinations, inspections, and according to 2909, which is in the code, special reports. So we're always looking to root out fraud, waste, and abuse, looking for government efficiency in ways that we can either uh, not overspend, but maybe some economic opportunities as well. So when we, get, when we think of that code and special reports, we recently released one in regards to the opportunity for Delaware to generate $43 million a year with the legalization of adult use marijuana. So that's what we are gonna focus on today on April 20th here, 2021 at DETV. And then I know I have a wonderful special guest who we have spoken with in the past and I hope you have been following us and her. Uh, Quinn, why don't you introduce her? Great, thanks State Auditor. Zoe, we can... Zoe from the uh, Delaware Cannabis Advocacy Network, welcome. Good afternoon. First of all, thank you, State Auditor McGinnis, for having me on to discuss this very important topic. And thank you for your detailed report that provides your fiscal perspective on cannabis legalization and adds that to our conversation that we've been having for nearly a decade here in Delaware. Um, my name is Zoe Patchell, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of Delaware Cannabis Advocacy Network. We're an all-volunteer, citizen-led advocacy group that's been lobbying since 2013 to remove the civil and criminal penalties for cannabis, implement criminal justice reforms for those that have been adversely impacted by prohibition, and convert the illicit cannabis market into a safe, legal, and well-regulated industry. Our organization has organized or participated in over 400 events to raise awareness, educate the public, and advocate for common sense cannabis policy reform throughout our state. Uh, cannabis prohibition is a failed costly policy that doesn't reduce the use, supply, or demand of cannabis, and it comes with an unjustifiable human and economic cost. So it's so imperative that we repeal the current policy and join the other 17 legal states to legalize cannabis for adults 21 and older. Perfect, thanks Zoe. And State Auditor McGinnis, please tell, tell the audience a little bit at how you arrived at this report right. and how you know the auditor became to uh, write about the legalization of marijuana. So there's many aspects to the legalization of adult use for marijuana here in Delaware, but our office stayed in our fiscal lane. What we wanted to do is um, an independent report, the chips fall where they may, and we showed that it was about $43 million in potential revenue. Now there's gonna be some costs and fiscal notes of, apparently you know, attached to this bill if, if it passed as it is with other bills. But what we, we thought there's a potential market of $215 million. Um, the 43 million is actually a conservative estimate and we're gonna to get to that later as well. But we, we also thought in the, uh, with our sound methodology, that there would be a job creation of about 1,400 jobs over five years. So there's a tremendous amount of benefits. And what we've done is provided the legislators with more information than they've had in the past. So it is actually up to them for what they want to do, for what percentage they'd want to choose. Um, and it's it was our job to do this report and stay in the fiscal lane. So uh, with that being said, uh, and we're gonna get to some exciting news later, which I just found out with a new report um, or, and some new numbers, but but that's where we are. That's what we did. We, we've been doing special reports for years in this office. And this one was very exciting. It actually got a lot of traction um, nationally and internationally as well. And Zoe, 
For the Delawareans that are listening, the legislature recently released House Bill 150. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So HB 150 is actually the third adult use legalization bill that's been introduced in Delaware. It currently has 25 co-sponsors, including prime sponsor Representative Ed Ozinski and Senator Trey Parity. And it's already off to a really great start after passing the House Health and Human Development Committee 10 to 5. Um, Wilmington City Council also just passed a resolution 0052 that just passed this past Thursday in support of HB 150, which actually urges the Delaware General Assembly and the governor to pass this measure this year. This is a common sense measure that will protect thousands of individuals annually from unnecessary law enforcement interactions and arrests, and it will save the state millions in enforcement costs. Um, and it's obviously a significant economic driver that will create thousands of employment opportunities in a range of fields. Um, this measure is supported by 61% of Delaware citizens, according to a University of Delaware poll. Thanks. And how is this bill different than prior years? Yes. So HB 150 is actually much different than previous legalization bills because of the significant social equity provisions that have been included in this version, um, which helps create and promote a fair and equitable industry and creates opportunities for all rather than just a selected few that have the capital to compete in this industry. Um, HB 150 is quite extensive. It has many different components uh, that are included in this broad spectrum reform. Um, and even though it's often overlooked as such, HB 150 is a significant criminal justice reform. It removes uh, the civil and criminal penalties for conduct that is now legal in 17 states and our nation's capital. It provides expungements for all past misdemeanor cannabis offenses. It creates the legal framework for converting the current thriving illicit cannabis market to a safe legal industry. It includes robust consumer safety provisions to ensure a safe product for consumers. And it also creates over a dozen specific measures to prevent underage sales and consumptions, neither of which exist on the current illicit market. Um, the bill actually establishes four direct industry licensed categories, including cultivation, manufacturing, retail, and laboratory and offers three separate license types, which include uh, social equity licenses for those who live in communities that have been disproportionately impacted by cannabis prohibition. Um, it offers micro licenses for small businesses and new entrepreneurs to participate in the new industry, um, as well as open license categories that allow anyone to apply. And with the inclusion of both the social equity and the micro license, uh, HB 150 creates what's considered modeled industry framework. So it's really important that we pass this version of the adult use legalization bill. Now, State Auditor McGinnis. Yes. In this recently released report, you estimated there was $43 million in tax revenue. Right. In 2017, the Delaware Department of Finance reviewed this issue and they examined tax designs of other states. They projected revenue of $12.5 million to $27 million. Only at a tax rate of 35% did the Department of Finance project revenue in line with the auditor's estimate. Do you really think $43 million is achievable? Absolutely. Um, and as I said, there's some exciting news because you, you get new data, and that's what we have to make our decisions on is data, sound data. And um, our report was based on more recent data. So that's, that's how I can tell you there's a difference right there. And our methodology was sound. Um, it's, it's hard to predict consumer behavior. And when we gathered information and looked at, you know, how many people decided uh, or, or to tell us that they would use or do use um, adult recreation marijuana, that percentage may or may not be so accurate. That's why I say we have a conservative estimate here because that number was 13.07 uh, in our report. And since then, there's been another report come out, a more recent report. So now we have more data and that number's higher. So actually, I, I stand by us giving a conservative number. For those who are listening, walk us through the math of this report. How did you arrive at $43 million? Okay. So, so I have a, a little graphic. I'm not sure if, if they have it up on the screen, but um, it, it talks about the economic impact of legalization. 
And the Delaware po adult population, we have 792,119,000 times 13.07%. Well, that's what we used when that was the data. That was a report from um, SAMHSA. And now the, a new report that's been released um, on January uh, on January 25th, we released our report. Since then, a new one came out. So that 13.07% is now 18.5%. So if you look at the chart and you say, here are the amount of adults, and these are the 13.07 the is now 18.5%, but we times it by an estimated amount of users that said, okay, we admit it. Um, and then we took the number, we got about 2,000 um, estimated spending. That can be higher. Um, that could be lower. We don't know. Uh, but we used what Colorado and Washington and based it off of theirs and took an average. And then we turned around and put a 20% tax on it. That number we should not get hung up on because it's up to the legislators and they can choose the number that they want to choose. But with that being said, and us getting to 43 million, you have to look at that chart where it says 13.07. Today, if we redid this, it would say 18.5. So the, the numbers are, are totally different now. I mean, estimated users went from just over 100,000 to up to 157,000. And those are the ones that are admitting it. So I, I have to tell you, it's a, it's a conservative estimate. This is the math. We stand by it. Um, we, we have more information. And as other states give their data, it only gives us more information. So if we were going to do a report in three years, we're going to have different data to work from. So in your report, you chose an excise tax of 20%. But as Zoe was just explaining in House Bill 150, the legislators chose 15%. Right. And our tax was uh, based on evaluating other states. And, uh, you know, I believe Washington had excise tax of 37% and Colorado um, has a tax rate of 30. So, I mean, it just depends. Again, I don't think we should get hung up on this. This is for the Delaware legislature to decide what works for them. Look at our neighboring states, however they want to formulate it, whatever they think is realistic, and that's how they can move forward their legislation. We were showing what we did with our methodology and our research and what we thought would be um, fair, equitable, and, and an average tax. Right. And Zoe, what do you say to those in law enforcement and healthcare opposed to legalization because they believe it's a dangerous drug? Yes, that's a really good question. Um, contrary to common misinformation, there's actually an abundance of research on cannabis that shows that this plant is non-toxic and has many health benefits. The National Institute of Health hosts over 20,000 peer-reviewed research articles on cannabis alone, and the evidence irrefutably shows that cannabis is considerably safer than alcohol, tobacco, and even many pharmaceuticals and other commonly consumed legal substances. Uh, many cannabis consumers actually consume cannabis because it doesn't come with the same side effects as consuming alcohol. Unlike alcohol, there are no hangovers, there is no lethal overdose from cannabis, there is no physical addiction, uh, cannabis isn't associated with violence or aggression, and many law enforcement officers themselves will admit that they don't deal with the same problems with cannabis consumers as they do with alcohol consumers. Research shows that cannabis is actually acting as an exit strategy for those addicted to alcohol, opiates, and other harmful pharmaceuticals. And the DEA's own annual report also shows that there's never been one single overdose death in the thousands of years of human interaction with this plant. Uh, meanwhile, thousands of people die every single year from alcohol poisoning, and thousands more die from the physical withdrawal symptoms that are associated with the dependency of alcohol. Um, the research is clear and abundant, and we need to stop criminalizing and penalizing adults who choose to consume this safe plant. And in the State Auditor's Special Report, the office estimated the legal market could create a thousand new jobs over five years if the policy was enacted. In your experience, what kind of jobs will be created as a result of legalization? And what does legalization mean to the industry? Yes, yeah, so first of all, the jobs that will be created under HB 150 will be well-paying career opportunities and not just simple jobs. This will create substantial opportunities for all of Delawareans. Um, and as the state auditor's report thoughtfully details, 
Legalization will create thousands of employment opportunities with direct industry jobs ranging everywhere from agricultural to retail, manufacturing, uh, management, uh, culinary, laboratory, security, and so much more. However, legalization also creates significant employment opportunities in a range of other ancillary and supporting fields, including construction, uh, electrical, HVAC, uh, tech, accounting, uh, real estate, legal, and even tourism. Um, HB 150 is a serious economic driver that will create thousands of well-paying jobs for Delawareans and even help replace jobs that were completely lost during the pandemic. It's important to note that this industry, it already exists here in the state of Delaware. So the revenue and the jobs already exist as well. We just need to legalize this pre-existing thriving industry, which will create uh, significant opportunities across the board for Delawareans. And Zoe, what was the result from the states who have done so already and legalized marijuana? What are some takeaways Delaware could use in that experience? Yes, so we now have 17 states that have legalized cannabis for adults 21 and older, as well as our nation's capital in D.C. Um, and there's a significant amount of research from these states that show that, um, you know, the many social and economic benefits of cannabis legalization, they're showing uh, obviously reduced arrests and reduced um, criminal justice involvement with citizens, seeing less law enforcement interaction increased um, public safety, increased um, public health as well. Um, and obviously there's the significant economic generator that this legalization bill um, creates in the states that have legalized. And we now have 17 other states that have um, active pending legislation, including all of the mid-Atlantic states and our neighboring states um, surrounding Delaware. And in the state auditor special report, they noted how, you know, they, while the report focused on the economic implications of legalization, such a, uh, such a move would surely be a positive step in reforming the criminal justice system. And what would be uh, your response to those states who have legalized it? And what should they take away from that? I mean, I think that, you know, obviously the state auditor's report shows that there's uh, a significant and thriving industry that exists with or without legalization. And I think that the states that have legalized, as well as our state of Delaware, recognizes that this is absolutely inevitable across the country. I mean, it's been a domino effect even within just the, the last few weeks where, um, you know, New York has now legalized Virginia, New Mexico, um, and many other states have uh, pending legislation that they're, that they're uh, moving forward with this year. And a lot of those efforts are actually governor supported initiatives. Um, so what, HB 150 will do and what legalization does is simply convert the criminal market to a safe legal industry. And, you know, based on the state auditor's report that shows, you know, the millions of dollars um, in this industry, as well as the jobs, it's the only responsible and safe thing to do is to legalize cannabis for adults 21 and older and convert this illicit market to a safe, legal, and well-regulated industry. I'm glad you brought that up. Just to piggyback on what you said in our report, we did talk about it. There is an illicit market. There's an illicit market because people are coming up to me going, well, what are we gonna do? People are gonna start uh, smoking pot and driving. I said, they're doing it anyway, if they have the energy to get in their car and drive. But the, the point is, is we need to, we need safe, we need regulation and, you know, the other issue is how, how is law enforcement going to handle this? I am sure that they can come up with a strategy and responsible framework as other states have done. Not only that, but we can do a huge educational campaign. Like when people were driving drunk and there was the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, I mean, we know it's not safe to drink and drive. We know, and it's really refreshing to see many in the younger generation that have a designated driver now because 
they understand that because they've learned that growing up. So this is no different than having an educational campaign, uh, having something that's safe, that's regulated, but also look at the economic benefits. Now more than ever, look how some of our businesses have gone out of business. People have lost jobs. Yes, they're getting some monies right now, but that's not going to last forever. And we need to be responsible and look at our neighboring states and industry. You know, who are we? Where are we located? I know the bottom half of the state is very focused on the uh, service industry, hospitality and tourism. And that's a huge driver. Uh, and we see we see the growth there that's happening. So with that being said, uh, folks are going to be coming here just like they would choose to vacation in another beach resort or another state park or another place um, that they decided to go to. And, and, and they're going to start weighing in some of these options into their vacation package. And I'm sure if any of you all have been in any traffic going over the Bay Bridge or up 95, uh, once you get to your destination, uh, sometimes we spend a little bit more on gas when we're at a, at a resort. Sometimes we spend a little bit more on food versus a, a different Walmart or grocery store inland, wherever you may go, or, or a mom and pop shop, hopefully. So with this being said, I think we really need to step back and look at the economics. And it's not just economics. There's other benefits as well. I am a licensed registered pharmacist. I've had loved ones who have suffered uh, from cancer and have had opportunity to either take a pill or, or the natural form of uh, cannabis for pain, for nausea. I've seen friends with HIV who've, who've had to go that same route that are dying, that need to eat. There's many, many benefits here. And we also know, you know, the myelin sheath around your spine, uh, glaucoma. There's, there's so many opportunities here, but these are my personal views and what I, I, why I firmly personally believe this, but my, I think my report, my sound methodology and my amazing team, they would not put out anything that is not legitimate and not accurate or true, or the data did not was not supported. And I stand with them and I stand behind them. Great. And I want to thank you both for being here so much. Stay honored. Do you have any wrapping thoughts? Well, uh, again, I just want to say, you know, there's a potential market here. We look at the numbers. We stayed in our fiscal lane. As, as Zoe said earlier, 61% of Delawareans approve of legalized uh, marijuana for adult use, as does 68% nationally. And that number could be higher than, than, you know, when we put out this report in January, who knows? But there's a potential state revenue, tax revenue here that can go to some good things that um, not only education, but... Um, a host of benefits that I believe Zoe touched on a few of them as well. And here I'm not in the minority. I am just letting you know that we would like to uh, stand behind our report, stand with our office and let you know that there is a real opportunity here in the first state cannot be last. Great. And Zoe, do you have any concluding thoughts as we wrap up here? Yes. First of all, thank you again for having me on and for taking up this very important conversation and providing uh, your report um, that gives us details that we can um, help to use us uh, as an advocating tool um, when we're talking about cannabis legalization. So thank you again for that. Um, we just ask that everyone please take action on HB 150. We only have 11 weeks left to pass this bill this year. Um, so we're asking people to please contact your state representative and senator today and ask them to vote yes on HB 150. Cannabis prohibition comes with an unjustifiable human and economic cost, and every year that cost gets greater. Uh, this is absolutely inevitable, so it doesn't make sense to continue to waste millions and arrest or cite thousands annually when we have now have 42 percent of the u.s population living in one of these legal states including our neighbors in new jersey uh, this bill has so many social and economic benefits it'll reduce the strain on the criminal justice and prison system um, it helps reduce crime and violence associated with cannabis prohibition um, and it also helps restore community relations and trust in law enforcement when uh citizens will not be um you know, stop for simple possession offenses any longer. So please go to DelawareCannabis.org, learn more on how to take action or how to get involved with our all volunteer legalization efforts. And please contact your elected officials and ask them to vote yes on HB 150. Great. And I want to thank you, Stay Honor, Kathy McGinnis, for joining us. Of thank course. you, Zoe Patchell. The Delaware Cannabis Advocacy Network for joining us. And and please, uh, I know you see the logo behind me. 
Go to auditor.delaware.gov today. If you care about accountability, if you care about transparency, because I hear a lot of people say they care, but let's see if you really care. Look at the good work that's coming out of our office. Yeah, we have financial audits, performance audits, engagements, agreed upon procedures, and special reports. And these things should matter to you because they do affect you and they affect your tax dollars. And we all have things that we care about, whether it's a, a nonprofit or a library or, or something or a park that you like to go to and, and, and walk around the walking path, whatever it is, we need to make sure that we have funds for these things. So we need to make sure that you're getting a fair deal with your money because it is your money. So I really encourage everyone to learn a little bit more about what their independent office does for them, the state auditor's office, and what we're doing. We are working hard for you on your behalf on a daily basis. I want to thank you, Zoe Patchell, one more time. A big shout out. You're, you're always available. You're always spot on, very articulate, and uh, best, best wishes to you. And thank you to DETV. Uh, and, and we missed Big Ivan, but we're in, Quinn, you were awesome. And we can't wait to see you again um, uh, next month.